Uh, but this is the trailer for the upcoming movie, Sound of Freedom. Watch this. How many pedophiles you got? 288. How many kids you found? It is the fastest growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. It has already passed the illegal arms trade, and soon it's going to pass the drug trade. Because you can sell a bag of cocaine one time with a child five to ten times a day. God's children are not for sale. How long have you been doing this? Twelve years now. How many pedophiles you got? 288. How many kids you found? Don't tell. Por rescatar niños, verdad? Puedes ayudar a encontrar mi hermana. Te lo prometo. For Homeland Security, you know we can't go off rescuing Honduran kids in Colombia. Which means she'll disappear for good. Imagine walking into a room right now, seeing an empty bed. What we do? You quit your job, and you go and rescue those kids. So at this moment, she could be a block down the road, or she could be in Moscow, Bangkok, L.A. She's a major operator. It's all rebel territory. No one goes in. Not the army, not the police, not us. What if this was your daughter? There's no Marine unit coming. You're on your own. This job tears you to pieces. And this is my one chance to put those pieces back together. When God tells you what to do, Amen. And it's okay to say amen to a uh, movie trailer, right? Yes. Because what you guys on television missed is the people here got to see the movie today. Yes. What, a, what a blessing that was. I, it was, I saw a lot of uh, not dry eyes uh, around the tent. Uh, listen, I wanna welcome, would you please welcome Eduardo, Eduardo, come on up here. Yeah, that's you, you're Eduardo. <laughs> Give him a hand. Let's dig Thank you. My friend, my friend. Stand right here, all right. And would you please welcome, Jesus is at Flashpoint, Jim Caviezel. Thank you, sir. Over here. Over here. All right. Now, those of you in the room, you know the story now because you saw the film. The man, the film's based on Tim Ballard. Please welcome Tim. The sound of freedom! All right, you may be seated. I told you these are your people. Please have a seat. All right, so let's, let's uh, for those of you on television, you missed it earlier, so we're gonna re kind of recap and tell the story a little bit since they didn't get to see the movie. <clears throat> I'm kind of rubbing that in, aren't I? Yeah, I, I'm not apologizing. All right, so uh, let's start uh, with you, um, my brother. Let's talk, Tim, the, the movie really starts off with you in progress. It's how true, how much creative license was taken with this script? Well, first, thank you so much. Thank you for being here and supporting us. And yeah. And you told me, NRB, you told me, 
Yeah. I didn't believe you, but you, you told me this would happen. Yeah, I did. Yeah, these are your people. This is amazing. And the reason I'm asking you, because the story is almost so bizarre, you go, I, they must have made a lot of this up. Yeah, no, I'll tell you what, um, every, every bad guy is real. In fact, the, the movie was um, cut because it got, it was too long. And remember we talked about all the, uh, they had cards at the end telling you every bad guy is real, every kid is real, and it told you where they are today. So they just had, they had to cut it. I, it, it hurt, but it was his fault. He, he... <laughs> <laughs> well, Way to go, Eduardo. I told him, you know what, let's, let's focus on the movie, and after that, we do a TV series, and then we put everything, right? There you go. Hey, that's it's coming, idea. it's coming. So, so they, play, they play with some times, um, you know, they bring a couple things together that didn't happen that fast, of course. Um, some things are definitely overreported. He makes me look way, way cooler than I am, I, I promise. <laughs> but some things are underreported. Like, the, the, we, we didn't rescue 54 kids on that island operation, we rescued over 120. Uh, so. Wow. <laughs> and there's a documentary, there's a documentary coming out called Triple Take, which tells everything that happened on that island, so. Um, yeah, so. So, well, we need to let us know when that is so that we can let everybody yeah, else know. Yeah, we will know. for sure. We'll yeah. make sure we'll be loud about it. Yeah, be very loud about it. Uh, Jim, a lot of these people watching tonight around the world have not seen and had, did not hear our t discussion this afternoon. I want them to know and grasp the, the level whenever I talk to you about this film and watch you. I mean, the level of passion uh, is intense. And I, having seen the film twice now, I understand. Uh, and I think everybody in this tent understands the passion, but I want to understand, what is it that, that really gripped you about this film? I think that um, I was just given a shirt, and it had all the Marvel comic characters on it, Superman, Batman, and all of them. And in the center was Jesus. And then he's, he's looking at them, all the Marvel characters, and he says, this is how I saved the world. Tim represents that. Yeah, I know. That's fine, let him know. Yeah. Thank you. I, I need to tell you something, though. I need to tell you something very important about these guys. Uh, because we can rescue one in hundreds or thousands. We, we have been blessed enough to, be, to have rescued uh, over 7,000 in our, in our t 10 years, women and children. And, I don't, I, and, that, and we do it all for one, like the movie depicts. We would do it all for one, but uh, there's millions of children. There's millions of children, so that's, statistically speaking, that's a drop in the bucket. And so that's why I, your, your applause should be at these guys, the storytellers, because remember, if you know the story, Abraham Lincoln, when he met Harriet Beecher Stowe for the first time in the White House, he said to her, so you're the little lady that wrote the big book that started this war. He, he, was, re he was recognizing that it was, the, it was the storytellers, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, Harriet Beecher Stowe, that that's what shaped and changed the foundation and it caused Lincoln to turn to God and change everything. Uh, about the purpose of the war, about liberating the captives. So we need storytellers because that's when millions get rescued. And so these guys are my heroes because they are the storytellers and I hope that, I hope this film can be the second iteration or the modern day Uncle Tom's Cabin to shine a light on modern day slavery and wake up the world. So, so thank you. There. <clears throat> There's a statistic at the end of the film that comes up that the first time I saw it, I had no idea it was at that level. Again, it's 152 million? Billion. Billion, billion. with billion. a B. Billions. 152 billion. That's what those traffickers make. Can you believe that? 152 billion? It's business. And it, it, it's so hard, Jim, it's so hard for everybody to 
grasp they're doing this to people. Can I give you what Tim told me? Yeah. So it'd be like every sports team, NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA, combine that. Now let's go to the World Cup soccer, all the countries. Grab all those countries, combine it. And then let's take every 18-year-old that's going to graduate high school and send them to Stanford for a four-year degree. Now you're talking 150 billion. That's staggering. It's hard to comprehend that. Eduardo, I mean, when you, you know, the film shines a light, a spotlight on, and, what, and you just said that, Tim, about on, on this industry that we all kind of had an understanding of that there, this was out there, more so recently. But we have this, and I say we, I'm saying most Americans, and I know we have other countries watching, and, and, it, and it may be this way for you too, but most people believe, oh, yeah, you know, it's horrible what they're doing over there in South America and what they're doing in Colombia. The reality of it being in America is something that we, it's been so far undercover that most, most of us had no idea it was at that level. Why has it taken so long, do you think, for us to see that light? Well, all I can say is that when I met this real hero eight years ago in Los Angeles, California, and I learned what he was doing, traveling around the world with his team undercover, rescuing children who were kidnapped for sexual exploitation, children, three-year-old boys, five, six, seven-year-old girls who are being raped 10 to 15 times a day for many years, and after the decline, you know, the client doesn't want them anymore because they're not fresh anymore. They jump into the second business in the black market of organ, organs traffic. They open them and sell their parts. And I was in shock. Gotcha. I was in shock. And he said to me, Eduardo, it's very sad, very sad what I'm telling you. But it's more sad now that you know if you do nothing. It's more sad that now that you know it, if you do nothing, what are you going to do? Right. I ask myself and I ask God, what can I do to end child trafficking? I'm a filmmaker. I have a, you know, I don't know how these guys, uh, they manage weapons, right? They're experts. I said to Tim, I have, a, I, have a, I have a weapon of mass instruction and inspiration, film, yeah. and I, I'm gonna use it. So I made a promise to God that I will dedicate my life to child trafficking through the art, through film. Yeah. Thanks be to God. And I said to him, but Tim, what, you know, United States, I mean, this is a global problem, right? right? It's a global right. problem. But U.S. is the number one consumer of child sex in the world. So did you get that? That was the hard part that I was stunned by. The United States is the number one consumer of child sex and Mexico is the number one provider I'm from Mexico I love Mexico I love United States this nation has been such an amazing blessing in my life opened it, the door to my dreams God bless this wonderful nation God bless Mexico and we need to work together because we're not just neighbors we're brothers we are brothers and we can make America and Mexico great together Right. But how can we make them together? How can we make them great together if there is many children? Right now, as we speak, when did you start um, this gathering? An hour ago? Yeah. Okay, yeah. hour ago. Almost. In Mexico, six children disappear when we started this gathering. In 20 more minutes, one more, and then 20 more minutes, one more, and then one more, and then one more. 57 a day, 21,000 a year. Those are the official numbers. I think it's more than that. I think it's more than that. When you hear that, how in the world are you gonna be looking the other way around or silence? No, I can't, I can't. Life is too short and I'm gonna answer to God one day. And if he reveals to me this information, it's because he wants me to do something about it. And my hope as a filmmaker 
is that when people see this movie, they will leave the theater not, not only entertained, they will leave the theater wanting to do something, asking the same question, God, what can I do to end this? Enough is enough. I want to do something for these children because God's children are not for sale. Well, let me ask, yeah, they're not for sale. But let me ask the audience, you've seen the film, Did it, do you, is that what happened for you? Did you leave wanting to go, you've not got to go do something. We must do this. We must, now come on, we must do this. This is not a maybe. This is not a maybe or let's think about it or let's have a meeting or establish a church committee. No, we have to get after this and take care of the problem. Thank you. Now, and I don't know how much you wanna say here, Tim, so I don't, I don't wanna cross any lines here. But as I'm watching the film, I'm wondering, so the government agencies uh, that you know, you've worked with and others, are they just so, oh, is it just so big a problem there's not enough people? Is that the reason this isn't, uh, they're not getting more uh, progress? It's, it's not a priority for some reason. And, and um, there's okay, about five. It's not a priority. You're going to have to break that down. Right, I, I, I will. Okay. So there's about, I, last I checked, the numbers are roughly about five anti-drug agents in the United States, for every one anti-child trafficking exploitation wow. investigator, it's crazy. Um, everything moves slowly, right, in, in, in a republic, I suppose, and it, it, the people gotta get loud. I mean, you, you ask also, I, I ask myself, how did, how did slavery, the, the transatlantic slave trade, how did that last for 350 years in the, same, in, the, in, the, in the land of promise, in the land of miracles? How did that happen? It's devastating, and it's just, it's just People got to get loud to make it a priority. And for some reason, this beautiful thing happened in the late 19th century, and they got loud. The abolitionists got loud, and everything changed. And so uh, here we are trying to change. We want to change. Like, we want five anti-trafficking agents to every one drug agent. That's what we want. Right. But the only way to do it, history teaches us, is get loud. And that's why I'm so happy I'm here, because you guys are loud. I know that. <laughs> You know, this is very important, what Tim just said, because I asked him that question, how come if the United States of America is the most powerful country in the world, you have the money, you have the army, the intelligence, the technology, everything, how come we don't finish this problem? And he answered what he just said, because it's not a priority. How can we turn this issue into a priority? Right. We need to start a movement. That's right. Because Eduardo, he said, I can be the solution for one kid, for 1,000, for 2,000, for 3,000. There are there's millions of children. This is beyond ourselves. This is big. So we need to start a movement, and this is the movement. This is the movement yeah. that will end child trafficking. And, and I want to add, this guy's a brave man, because eight years ago when we started this project, he, he, I remember we talked about this. You could Google human trafficking and child tra and it didn't, it was hardly there. Right. So he's making a movie about something, you know, that people don't even know what it is and it sounds kind of crazy. But you remember these conversations? And, and Alejandro, no one's gonna go see your movie, but, but God's telling us to do it anyway. And eight years later, here we are, people are talking about it. Not like they need to, but at least it's sure. there. And the timeliness. I mean, I've been doing media for Shannon Freedom. And you see what happened, the story that broke two days ago on Instagram where pedophiles and traffickers are using Instagram, and Instagram's not doing much to stop it, maybe even facilitating it. This film, you saw how the, the story kicks off at the port of entry, right, and at the, at the southern border. That's a true story. They filmed that exactly where that happened with that little boy and the necklace. That's a real story, the necklace with, with, the, my, with the, the Timothy on it. Um, that's timely. Look what's happening right now at our southern border. I, I was 10 years on that border. I, pro I mean, 85,000 unaccompanied minors just in the last year or two um, that show up, thousands are five years old or younger, what are they doing? The economics of, us, of, of this whole thing tells us. We are the number one demand for child sexual exploitation material in the world. Thousands, tens and tens of thousands of kids are coming and disappearing. I, let me tell you how it works if you don't know. They, they kidnap a kid in Central America or wherever and they just, little safety pin a name, the sponsor, put the name in the pocket, 
the five-year-old shows up, the 10-year-old, wh whatever, and uh, Health and Human Services has to take the kid, call the number, and your taxpayer dollars will then pay for the final leg of that trafficking experience when, it gets, when the kid put on a bus, on a plane, and taken to whoever's name is on there. Can you, can you imagine if in Columbus, Ohio, or Salt Lake City, or San Diego, if a child was found alone, unaccompanied, they, the police would take that child. They would not give that child away. They would do everything, DNA test, background check, everything. And these kids, these poor children who are coming into our country because we won't enforce, if we enforced, they come wouldn't on. be incentivized right. to come. But because, there, because there's no incentive to do anything but come, I mean, these traffickers are making $14 million a day, these kids, we are, our policies are facilitating and even paying for child trafficking right here at home. This is why we need to get loud now, and I think God saved this movie to come out right now while things are popping, right? Don't you think yeah. And 4th of July, 4th of July, we're competing with who? We're competing with Disney, who wants to corrupt your children. Yeah. And Sound of Freedom wants to save the children. Yeah. David against Goliath. You're David too. That's right. If we come together as one David, we know the end of the story. Yeah. Jim, I, I, I want to ask Jim a question here. Jim, obviously coming off of the Passion of the Christ and you know, what's a phenomenal work that you, you did and uh, what an anointing that was on you to do that. I, would you agree? Yeah. What an anointing on Jim for that. Um, but I, I, I want to understand, I want our audience to understand something that we talked about earlier is what motivated you, what really pulled you out of other projects uh, to do this project? What was it that spoke to you the loudest? Uh, well, I mentioned earlier that I have three adopted children from China and going through that process, you realize the dangers that children undergo globally. And that was the beginning of just that question in your heart that, you know, how one person can make a difference. And you all of a sudden there's this script about Tim Ballard. And then um, my buddy here, Eduardo, it's Vrastigi. Okay? Vrastigi. <laughs> hey! <laughs> and he comes and uh, I just, I mean, one of the greatest directors I've ever worked with, Alejandro Monteverdi. And they come and they talk to me and they were going already with someone else and I made it impassioned it, like I would that this is important to me as the passion of the Christ was and what we were able to do with that movie taking it to a whole nother level the danger element of it and there were many many dangers um, in making a film like this and but one of the things that that why I am a, a Christian, you know, we're all different denomination, Roman Catholic Christian, but when my fire, my heart gets on fire, I'm the best I ever will be. And that's what it was on that one, and that's what it was on this one, to play this great man right here. Amen. Now I have to say something. I asked him, Ballard, who do you want to play you? And he said, Jim Caviezel. I said, but Jim, I know Jim, but Jim is like taller than you. He's older than you. Uh, he doesn't look like you. He's better looking. And he said, it doesn't matter. He's a man of God. And he's a brilliant actor. And we are looking for an ambassador of freedom. And he can be an ambassador of freedom. Please get Jim Caviezel. Please, please. And I text that day, uh, Jim Caviezel, and I said this before. I thought he was going to answer with typical answer, you know, Hollywood actor. Yeah, I call my manager, my agent, whatever, and then nothing happens, right? He answered me right away, let's meet tonight. We met him tonight. Uh, we met him that night. He had a beer, long beer. Uh, so I thought, wow, we're, we're with Jesus right now. <laughs> um, so we pitched the story to him, and he was, in, he was with a tear in his eyes. He said, I I'm in. Send, send me this script. So I'm very excited with this news. I haven't share this news with Tim yet. The next day he calls me and he said, Eduardo, and this is a miracle, this is how God works. He said, Eduardo, um, so I mean, but you know, I, I, I talked to my wife, 
I told her that I have to go to Colombia to film this movie. I think she's just saw Narcos on Netflix. <laughs> Narcos Colombia on Netflix and I, she doesn't want me to go there. Can we film this somewhere else? He said, okay, well, let, let me call you back. So I called Tim and I said, Tim, I have a good news and a bad news. <laughs> good news, Jim is in. The bad news, what I thought was a bad news, you see the story. His wife saw, I think his wife saw Narcos Colombia on Netflix and, and she doesn't want him to go there. She's not comfortable him going to Colombia film this movie. So what can we do? And he said, uh, let me think about it. Tell them if he, uh, 30 ex-Navy SEALs will be, will be enough to protect him. How many? 30 ex-Navy SEALs. Okay. So I pass the message. <laughs> Done. So we're in Colombia <laughs> filming, right? So remember I say, I say good news and bad news, right? Three weeks later after filming the movie, half of them are not on the set. And I don't, want, I don't want to tell Jim anything, but I, I know, as a producer, I know who is on set. So there's 200 people on set, and I noticed that half of those guys were not, on, were not on set. So I didn't ask Tim anything, so I pretend like nothing, nothing happened. <laughs> and a uh, month later, a month and a half later, I'm reading a local newspaper that it says, 23 traffickers were arrested, 200 children were rescued from, you know, they were kidnapped for sexual exploitation for this tourism in Cartagena. Um, I run to see Tim, he's a brother. This is like the movie. And he smiles and he said, that was us. So what? <laughs> that was us. So thank God for Jim's wife who said no in the beginning because of that no, we have these warriors on set who saved 200 children. Wow, that's awesome. And, and you have to understand that as a filmmaker, our hope is when the film is finished, when the film comes out, hopefully this film will save one child. On set, while we were filming this, filming this movie, 200 children were saved, were rescued in Cartagena, Colombia. So God bless you, brother. And God bless your wife. Okay. And God bless you all. All right, so here's, here's what we're going to do. And those of you in this room, you already know this. Um, we talked about this. I have to hurry because they need to leave. But here, here's the, the core to do for all of you Flashpoint Army folks watching. And we're going to send this out in the email and everything else again because we really need to do this. Um, the, as, as Jim was explaining and Edward were explaining today, I just want to give a quick recap. There's a cap on the number of theaters right now that they can release. Correct me if I'm wrong. Can I explain here. this? Yeah, go ahead. I'm not going to say no to Jesus. So go ahead. <laughs> There's a cap on how well. Right now, we're ahead uh, quite a bit on the film behind us, but there's a wall that we can't get through and that there's a cap on how much we can do opening weekend, which is essentially is probably $8 million. So there is a huge movement behind it, but we got to blow through that wall, and we need your help to do that. Now, all of you saw the movie. How many, in your, uh, how many people are watching right now? Like, I don't know. Could be, all right, a million people. Can you tell them, by your enthusiasm right now, how important this film is because you all just watched the movie can you tell the people those million people that are watching right now how bad they need to see this Here's the thing, people have said flashpoints of movement. I think it's time for this movement to get behind this movement. What do you think? So here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to angel.com slash flashpoint. Those of you here, you can scan the QR code. Uh, angel.com slash flashpoint, buy a ticket. 
uh, share that link because I want them to know the reason we put Flashpoint, I want them to know that it's you guys that did what you're going to do. So you're going to go do that. Now there's an email address because I know that there are some businesses. I know there's some churches. You have the power, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, that you have the power to pick up the phone and call your local theater and say, look, I don't want to just buy a showing out. I want to buy a month's worth of showings. Okay? We got to think big here. This is too important of an issue for us to sit back and go, oh, you know, that was a great movie. Yeah, and that guy, boy, that guy, he did a great job. And that Tim Ballard, you know, he's amazing. No, we've, this is, a, it's, you heard, $152 billion a year industry and our borders are wide open. We must do this. We mu- I'm telling you, I'm laying everything on the line here as emphatically as I can tell you, we must do this. I told those of you in the room here earlier, I have grandchildren. When he starts talking about three-year-olds, I, I shudder at that thought. I know you do too. I mean, that's staggering. So we need you to get behind it. Now, so if you're going to do a group and you want to go rent out a theater and you need more information on how to do that, go to groups. There's the email on the screen, groups at angel.com, groups at angel.com, and tell them that's what you want to do because we are not, I know, I'm going to hit this Gentlemen, I'm going to keep hitting this until you tell me we made, we made what we need to make, okay, as far as pushing through here. It's too important of a situation. Are you behind me? Are you with us? Yeah. All right. So uh, let's see. They wanted to do a picture. I know you guys have to go, but I promised something that I want Jim to do. We are going to do that. We've got, a, we got a, the rest of the night. We're going we're gonna to do more of that. Uh, we wanted to do a picture, I understand. You guys want to do a picture yes. of everybody behind you? Yes, but before uh, we, we leave, um, you know, it's an honor for us to be here in front of so many warriors, prayer warriors. So, as you know, there is many people in government worldwide involved in this crime. I have to make a decision, a very important decision, very soon. I'm thinking about it, I'm praying about it. I may run for president of Mexico. Thank you. Thank you. So, I'm not a politician. I'm a filmmaker. But I love my country. And I'm tired to see how my country has been raped for decades. So again, I only want to do, I only want to do God's will. I'm going to make this decision very soon. If it is God's will for me to do it, Please, please pray for me. Pray for Mexico, because I believe that we can make America and Mexico great together. God bless you. All right. Would you let them know what you think? Let them know what you think. Stay standing. Uh, those of you on television, just get in the picture. All right, so you want to get here and you want to turn around and show everybody? This is your documentation, the beginning of a movement right here, all right? For social media. All right. When we shoot the, hey guys. Hey, hello. Sorry, I forgot, I forgot I had a mic. When we shoot this, one, two, three, just cheer like bloody mad while he's taking the photo. Okay, ready? Now, do you want us on our knee like this? Yeah, I think so. Okay. okay.
Now, last thing, you may be seated real quick. Um, Jim, I asked you to do this earlier today. Uh, the special thing that um, I, I really want for all of everybody in the tent and those at home, because I asked Jim to say the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic because it's the, the language of Jesus. So, Jim. Ozina Otia Boy Kuma Bezrati Shambreni Meresha to share Tammy no lie. A cockasaya no share than I. A cockasiti, a cock with acti. A ba coolet to get a hen kahil cossaye a day mini. A cane lock is far. Lehue de lock is far. Ilatil kum arahe mahaki hita hita hivo denali dena ko kavel diana of hef lukum antun hita hivo lukum my commandment to you is this you love one another as I have loved you so you love one another coming very soon, the resurrection of the Christ. God bless you. God bless you. All right. All right, so stretch your hands out. We're going to pray for these guys before they go. They've got a lot on them, a lot of opposition, as you guys well know. So let's agree in prayer. Father, I just lift up Jim and Tim and Eduardo, Lord, all that they have to accomplish, the mission that you've called them to, every aspect of this, whether it's Tim in the field or Jim doing uh, in acting, Eduardo in the filmmaking, Father, I ask you just to give them favor. But more than favor, I thank you for open doors like never before. We proclaim the open doors for this film that changes the heart and soul of America. And Father, I thank you for the children, the children that will come to be saved through this and then come to know you through this. So Father, I thank you as we send these gentlemen forth, we do not say goodbye, but we send them forth in the name of Jesus. Be blessed. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.